The natural order of things is that parents raise their kids and the kids grow up and take care of themselves and maybe their own children. But one form of family dysfunction is where your parents don't function fully as adults and you have to step in and make up the difference and take care of them emotionally, pay their bills, and keep their lives in order even if it keeps you from tending to your own life. There's a societal message that adult kids have to take care of their parents and they're bad people if they walk away from that. But is that always true, especially if the parents are not old and the young adults are young, young adults? My letter today is from a woman I'll call Carly, and she wants so bad to get on her feet, but she's getting sucked back into her parents' home. And she writes, I'm writing this letter because I don't know who to ask for perspective in my personal life while protecting my family's privacy. I love my family, but my relationship with my parents, specifically my mother, is deteriorating because of her financial dependence caused by past financial recklessness. All right, I've got my fairy pencil. I'm going to circle stuff I want to come back to on a second reading, but let's just read through. It's a fairly short letter. Let's see what's going on with Carly. All right. We've been struggling financially for most of our lives, half of mine. I'm in my early 30s. Currently, I'm the only one working in a household of four. My income is low. I can't afford a place on my own in the city we're currently in. My mom gets help from the government for bills, and I pay for the bills she can't get help for, on top of my own personal bills. It's been three years that things are getting worse. Wow. No one is making a real effort to change the situation, and I've told them that, but nothing has changed. I feel burnt out and alone. I feel like I didn't get to enjoy my youth, and I feel like my friendships are also suffering from this because I'm always tired, I'm, I've been told. I know this isn't the real me, and I know I have the skills to make a high income, but I never have the time and energy for myself. I'm an artist with a day job, and I want to use social media to make a higher income. I'm moving to another country in a month. Ooh, interesting development. And that's a way of making sure it's not easy to move back and have a job lined up. I also speak the language there. The job doesn't pay a lot, but it's enough for me to start. I have some savings, which has been a battle to keep to myself, and I plan on starting my business while I'm there. Amazing. I had moved away twice before, but always came back. That was my mistake and stayed to, quote, save money, as my mom advised. What happened in reality is that I ended up staying to pay for everyone else's part of the bills for years. I take full responsibility for the part I've played in this dynamic, but I can no longer put my life last to help my family. I feel like my mom expects someone to come save her. She's not working. She says she's tired from all the jobs she had before and the sacrifices she's made for us. She still has years ahead of her, but she's given up. She watches TV all day. Huh. I don't expect her to take care of me financially, as I don't feel like she ever really has, but I've come to believe her strategy in life was to have her kids give her money when they grew up. I've encouraged her to pursue her business idea, but she keeps waiting for me to initiate everything. When I don't do it, she doesn't do anything about it. I worry so much about her that I haven't done anything with my life. I've been caring for my parents as if they had already retired when my life hasn't even started. I know I need to separate from my mom financially and stop over-functioning so that she can do something, but I'm scared I'm abandoning my parents even though I know they're adults. I want to be fi a financially independent and autonomous adult. I want to have choices, my own family, but I'm stuck being a parent to my parents instead. My question is, how do I deal with feelings of guilt for abandoning my parents when they're in the trenches? Am I doing the right thing? Your tough love is welcome, and some comfort would be nice as well. Okay, you got it. I don't have any tough love for you, Carly. Just comfort. I think you're doing great. My question is how to deal with feelings of guilt for abandoning my parents when they're in the trenches. Okay. So I have a unique definition of abandonment. I don't think adults can really be abandoned. Um, children can be abandoned because without a doubt, parents are supposed to care for their children. And if they leave and the kids are not cared for, they're left on the street or outside a casino as I was when I was little, that is abandonment. When people talk about maybe like a partner abandoning them, leaving the marriage, it's terrible and painful, but it's a different category of leaving uh, because adults can take care of themselves. And I think 
you know, we all know that certain adults cannot take care of themselves. They have mental illness, they have a physical disability, are in a state of grief or depression. Your mom does sound depressed and she sounds like she's in a freeze state, but you taking care of her financially is really just prolonging her non-healing on that. And healing, her healing would be fantastic. But the beautiful news is you really don't have to do anything about that because that's her journey and you have your journey. And I feel really concerned for you about what you said that you're not starting your life. You're tired all the time in your thirties. This is not right. The right thing to do is to take care of your life right now. Your parents are not retired. They're not retirement age. They have a way to deal with this. And it may be that there are some consequences to their inertia about this. But this reminds me of what I learned in Al-Anon about dealing with somebody who's um, an alcoholic, which is that it is dignified to allow people, it, it's giving them their dignity to allow them to experience the consequences of their actions. And that when we're getting in there trying to prevent them from having consequences of their actions, we're meddling in a process in such a way that blocks them. And it sucks the energy and joy out of our lives, but it also blocks them from the necessary process that prompts a person to, whoa, I got to think about this. I've got to find a better way. I've got to deal with the finances, get a job, whatever it is. It's interesting that she um, is saying she wants to start a business, but people who can't do anything might not be candid it's for starting a business if like a job strikes me as a better thing but here we go we're like diagnosing her we don't need to I guess I want to help you draw a boundary and be like stop thinking about it she'll figure it out she may have consequences it's not your responsibility I know you're gonna feel guilty if they lose their house and end up homeless I know I know that's the case um, but for right now like for the next two years I really encourage you just focus on you I love that you have a starter job in another country, which will help you make that separation. It's an unhealthy umbilical cord you've got there, right? It's, it's, it's gravely dysfunctional for you. And it, it's always two way, you know, if, if one person can't develop, it's causing the other person to not develop either. I'm a mom of um, men in their young twenties and I have learned to let go of them. I help them. They're at an age, they're in college, you know, so I help them, but they also work and they have their own thing. And I'm learning a lot about how you go from being the total, you know, mother of a baby to gradually just letting them go and being who they are. <laughs> and it's, I realize that for me, the process of having a baby and raising children and having them be, be teenagers and then leaving home, one is left home, one lives at home while he's in college. And you know, I just, like part of me wants to keep him at home forever, but that's not good for either one of us. It's not just part of his development to get, to grow up and get on his feet. It's part of my development. And so just remember that it's a beautiful part of human development to raise kids and set them free. And that's a phase of life for parents and for, you know, non-parents too. I have, it, the phase of life would have different labels on it, but to be older, and to be focusing on sort of feathering the nest for old age, it's a noble and beautiful thing for us to do. And I wish for everyone to be able to do it in a good way that they can handle. I know not everybody's needs are met, but your mom is operating in a, in a pathological way. And it sounds right what you guessed that she, her big plan was other people will come take care of me. And some people have that. It's probably not even her fault that she has that, but that doesn't mean that you throw your own future under the bus so that you know you can keep paying her bills while she watches tv all day that makes me mad that's not right and you're also going to have to confront a little bit that part of you has kept coming back to this because there's something you get out of it like you get to avoid your life and i you de you demonstrate a great self-awareness but i really want to underscore like do not be like her do not avoid your own development your own blossoming as a person you know she sets you up with the guilt to draw you to that, but you decide yes or no, whether you're going to do it. And in a weird way, like when somebody really needs you, it gets you off the hook of having to figure out how you're going to do your life, which is scary. It's scary at any age and making transitions and, oh my gosh, moving to a new country. Hats off to you. That's really great. That's amazing. I'm somebody who travels a lot. And I often think like, could I handle moving to another country? It would be a big thing. So I'm really proud of you. So you go, you go and just send nice cards, have some nice WhatsApp conversations or Zoom calls with her and do not participate in the guilt trip. Guilt 
in my approach to healing, guilt and shame is resentment. They are resentment at yourself. You know, my approach deals with, it, it's a method for dealing with fearful and resentful thoughts. So you have fear that they're not going to be okay without you, fear that you're doing something wrong, and you're resentful at yourself for putting yourself first. And when we have resentment at ourselves or anybody, there's usually fear under it. You know, fear it's not worth it, fear you don't deserve this, fear you'll never make it. You know, I, I'm just guessing. These are the fears I would have in your shoes. And um, it's all there. Like we all come with kind of a full set of cards of all the ways that we can be fearful about making bold choices. But your choice is not audacious. Your choice is prudent and sound and, you know, healthy. Gosh, it's just, it's great. And it involves art. So this just sounds really good. So she may guilt trip you. Other family members may guilt trip you. I'm going to really encourage you to participate in um, a group. You can come to my membership if you want. And uh, there's always a link to my membership program down below where, you know, we have this vibrant community in a secret Facebook group where, where people support each other for questions like this and everything trauma related. And people go through my courses together and they, um, there's like little study groups and there's peer led daily practice calls. And it's a way that you can help support yourself to keep the voice of sanity and healing always in one ear as you, you know, deal with your life in the, with the other ear. That's kind of a weird metaphor, one ear, one ear. But you know what I mean? You, you need both. You need to be in the world of your present life and you'll be talking to your family, but you, you need that engagement with others. And if you're going to a new country, I, I, I'm just guessing it might be a little, it might be um, a little slow making friends. You're going to be needing to make new friends and you can have instant friends in the membership program. That's an option. Also 12 step programs. And you would certainly qualify for ACA, adult children of alcoholics and other dysfunctional families. And maybe also there's a program I've never visited it, but I know so many people who have had remarkable transformations in their life. It's called debtors anonymous. And these problems are about money. And they've, it's happened for you too. And this feeling that you have to help her, I think you would be a lovely candidate to check out that program. And one silver lining, just one of the pandemic is now there's a lot of online meetings. So even if there's not one like in your neighborhood once a week, you can find something online and you can, you know, find a sponsor. You can find people to do, um, they have these things called pressure relief groups where once a week a handful of people get together and you share with each other transparently what's going on with your money. And I just always thought it was beautiful. I've seen people just have such, they've just blossomed and bought houses and, you know, really achieved great goals. And um, check it out. That might be something for you. If you want just a quick way to start envisioning your future for you or anybody watching, I've got a download, very popular, called If You Had Just One Year to Heal. Now, you're not going to heal from past trauma in one year. I'm, I know that. This is a thought exercise on if you only had a year and you had to get it done like a marathon real fast, what would you do? And it's an exercise that helps unlock what you already know you need to do to change your life. It can be very powerful and you can access it free by clicking right here. And I will see you very soon.